Hi, I'm Matt Tracy. We're talking about utility revenue cases. How do utilities ask for money? Uh, we're going to jump right in with where we left off, which means I need to page down. Whoop, come back. We just finished talking about depreciation, and now we're going in to finish, finish off the definition here of revenue requirement. As I just mentioned, the actual math of what's going on isn't that complex. The revenue requirement is the total revenue required to operate the utility and provide the investors a fair and reasonable return for the use of their money. It's the amount they collect, it's the amount they are allowed to collect from customers and it's collected through tariffs. Tariffs, that's the billing rates, that's the prices. And it's a result from a rate design process and I've already talked er way earlier about rate design and we're not gonna get into that. Um, the rate design is which group pays how much. This is, we're just looking at for now, what's the total amount of dollars that the utility needs in order to operate. So the revenue requirement is operation and maintenance expenses plus taxes plus depreciation plus the return times the rate base. That's the math. It's not that hard. All right. All right. Let's take a look next. We, we have initiated a, a, a rate case with an application. Pretty much as soon as you have filed, and typically uh, everyone knows the utility is going to file. They try not to surprise anybody. The commissioners don't like being surprised by that sort of thing. Uh, commission staff doesn't like being surprised by that sort of thing. So you give the people a heads up, this is coming. Um, typically, as soon as you file a, uh, a revenue request increase, a rate case, uh, you will start getting data requests. This is part of the discovery process. Um, the utility, for the most part, has all of the information that everybody else needs in order to analyze what's going on. And so while you can ask a discovery of any of the parties to a case, pretty much all the data requests come to the utility. Uh, certainly the lion's share go to the utility. Data requests are the method to officially exchange information that may be relied upon later in the process. All right. Uh, in making a case, uh, you're not allowed to make stuff up. You've got to be able to say, this is the information. It came from the company. They got it from this process. Uh, and so we are relying on it and on what they have provided. Uh, you're not allowed to just say, I think this should be this. Uh, you actually have to show, no, this actually came from someplace. This means something. Um, any information in the company's control may be subject to discovery. Uh, and this can include all the emails, all the voicemails, uh, certainly any memos, any, any accounting information, pretty much anything. If there's an official record of it, or even an unofficial record of it, if it's someplace that somebody can get to it, it is subject to discovery. And I will just toss in, and this kind of applies not just to utilities, but to anybody who works anywhere, um, pretty much all those emails you send out, all the phone calls you make, uh, the emails, the company keeps copies of all of those. I mean, all of that stuff is, is collected. Uh, now, whether or not they deliberately keep it or whether it's just it's caught in the daily backups, who knows. But the point is, particularly for utility uh, employees, is you could be called upon to answer on the witness stand before the commission for what was said in any given email. And the reason I point that out is just some people love sending out, you know, oh, this is the famous, you know, my, my, my aunt sent me these funnies and now I'm gonna send it to 30 other people from in, in, or, you know, oh, please, you know, don't be one of those people who sends out the chain mails. Oh, you know, I sent this to 20 people. You need to send it, you know. Don't do that because you're going it, to, it's, it's unlikely, but it's very possible you could be called to account 
uh, on the witness stand to answer for how does this help the customers? How does this, you know, not a waste of time uh, and resources? Um, certainly that applies to utilities. Uh, it applies to pretty much everybody else just in terms of your boss could ask you, you know, you're sending out 200 emails a day that have nothing to do with what you do for a living. Um, help me understand why I should uh, be pleased with that. All right. So anyway, any information that's uh, in the company's control may be subject to discovery. Uh, discovery requests, uh, typically data requests or information requests, DRs or IRs uh, for short, uh, are almost always uh, limited in how long you have to respond. Again, from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, it may vary. Uh, some jurisdictions, it's 20 days from the time you receive a data request to the time you have to respond. Uh, some jurisdictions, it's 10 days. A lot of places, it'll vary depending on where you are in the case. Uh, the cases can take anywhere from eight to 11 months in most jurisdictions. Uh, as you get closer to the decision point, typically that time shortens up. And so what may have started out, you know, an 11 month uh, time frame. At the beginning, you may have 20 days to respond. Closer in, you may have 10 days to respond. And towards the very end, you may have five days to respond. Um, so you have to get, be able to respond to this. And you might say, you know, who takes 20 days to answer a question? Well, the reason why you have that much time is in, uh, and I will use a, a Missouri example, uh, uh, in one electric rate case, uh, the company received over 1,300 data requests with over 5,000 questions embedded in all of those requests. If on the first day after you file an application, you may easily get 200 data requests. Uh, you then have to uh, log all of those in, check all of them, figure out who answers this uh, because the questions will be all over the place. Um, you, that was one of the things about being in the regulatory department is you've got to know everybody in the company largely because you had to figure out, okay, who can answer this question? I don't have a clue. Okay, this is an engineering question, but is it substation engineering or is it transmission engineering? Or, and so you track all of this down. Um, and of course, you may receive another 200 requests the very next day. And so you've got to be moving on this all the time. Uh, you have a process that moves forward with this. Uh, all of this information, you try to track it down. You try to make sure it's, uh, you try to make sure that the, uh, whoever you assigned it to to answer sends the answers back to regulatory. Uh, this was fairly critical because you don't want them sending it directly to the staff member or whoever asked the question because we need a copy of it. We need to know what somebody answered because it happens, frankly, it used to happen more often, but it still happens. Way more often than you think uh, is reasonable is that two different groups within the staff, because staff will have different groups actually in different physical locations, may ask the exact same question at different times. And so when a question comes in, a regulatory tries to check to make sure, okay, have we already answered this question? And if we have, then, and we catch it, then we try to make sure that we just say, okay, see the response to this data request that came in earlier, there you go. That way we know. Uh, when that doesn't happen, sometimes the question goes out to somebody else rather than the first person who answered it. And then maybe there's a different response. And then we're left with having to answer, okay, you answered this one time, you answered this a different time, what do you, what's going on? And so just trying to keep track of this many questions, who's asking them, who's responded, it, it's an issue. Uh, but this is how you exchange information that can be relied upon by the other parties and so that's why it's so critical that internally uh, the utility keeps track of who said what to whom. All right, negotiations occur throughout the uh, process. Uh, 
pretty much any time they can happen. It's an attempt to reach a settlement with all of the parties to the case. Uh, it has several advantages. Uh, nobody wants to go in. I mean, when you actually go before the commissioners, you will typically have a list of here's the items we need to, to litigate that we need you to decide. Uh, you bring a list of 30 things and they're going to be annoyed with you. All right. They don't want to hear 30 different things. Um, and so you try, particularly the small stuff, particularly the small stuff, you try to negotiate those issues and say, okay, let's get rid of this. You know, we don't need anybody to, to help us figure this out. This and this and this, we'll put this all in a package and say, all right, this is the dollar value of that. And we're not going to say who won what. We're just going to say, this is the dollar value. We're done. Move on. The advantages for this typically can be like uh, early implementation for a utility. If you're asking for a, say, a $24 million annual rate increase, uh, or that's what you think you can settle on, that means for every month early that you can settle this $24 million case, that's $2 million you're going to get every month. All right? And so that's worth $2 million, $2 million a month to settle that case early. Um, the other big advantage is that it avoids a hearing. Sometimes there are issues that, you know, you don't feel good about or one of the other parties doesn't feel good about on their hand. And so they just really rather, you know, maybe they can have a better argument next time, but this one, it just is pretty weak. Let's just not have a hearing on this so that that way there's not a final decision on this. Disadvantages is clearly it's, it's a quid pro quo kind of deal. Uh, I give you this, you give me that. All right. Nobody wins everything on a negotiated uh, settlement. Um, and so that's the downside. The other thing is it avoids a hearing. And remember how I said that it's an advantage. That can also be a disadvantage to the extent that there are times that you've You've looked at an issue for years, sometimes decades, literally decades, and no one's ever taken it finally to the commissioners to decide. It's always been settled. It's always a side issue. It's, you know, there's not enough dollars there or nobody feels good enough about their arguments or whatever reason. No one's ever made it final, taken it to the commissioners for a final decision. It's always just settled out. And so at some point, it just must just be nice to have a decision and say, look, Tell us how you want this done and we'll do it. Uh, negotiations, they happen throughout. I'm going to stop again. Hope to see you back next time. Thanks for sticking with me.